All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 20th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022. Well, Thinking Biblically is about thinking in, in a, a, about things in a way that's illuminated by the teachings of the Scriptures, the teachings of Jesus and the Apostles and the Prophets, uh, about human nature and the nature of reality. So it's not just about talking about the Bible. It's about looking at what's going on in the world and understanding it in a sense that is enlightened by what God has revealed to us about truth and human nature <laughs> and the, the sinfulness of man, among other things. So, uh, and that covers just about everything. So it, it makes it easier to connect the dots. Definitely. So I was just thinking a, a second ago about Donald Trump and how to win the election or whatever happens between whenever the election is. You know, it might not be more than two years ago. Away. I mean, there's 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 things could happen. Uh, just like uh, I just heard a story about. Uh, well, the, the election is being rigged in France. They put out a smear. The EU put out a smear on, on Le Pen. Uh, just dug up some old charges that have been long since dead and just threw that out right before the election. So this dirty, wicked meddling in elections by officials extra outside your own country is nothing new. So will they, will they charge the EU with meddling in the French elections? depends on who gets elected. They obviously want Macron back in power, but the French people, I don't think, want him in power. Uh, <clears throat> there was an, a number of, remember the riots a few years ago, The was it the yellow vest or red vest or whatever it was, the dry truck drivers and everything else? Well, uh, I just heard a report, there's a prediction by J.P. Morgan that after the after the election, after Macron is back safely in power, uh, the uh, they're they're going the EU is going to put sanctions on Russian oil, and the price of oil, according to JP, JP Morgan, will go to one hundred eighty five dollars a barrel. Well, let's see. Should I get into Trump first, or no? I'll have to continue on with that thought. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> it might in Europe, but. Not other places. Uh, this is why oil is a commodity. It's not an abstraction. It, it, and it is liquid. It can be moved. It can be sold. It can be bought. It can be resold. So if uh, it, it's like, it, so the, I don't know. These, these politicians don't seem to know anything about reality. It's like people that think that milk comes from the grocery store. And they don't know anything beyond that. Like this whole chain going back to four-legged animals called cows that are always of the female gender for some reason. <laughs> Unless you've got a really confused farmer. Okay, farmers understand things like that. They have to. Otherwise, they get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> with animals with horns. Okay, so uh, anyway... Oil. So the the the, the uh, United States and Europe, in its infinite wisdom, like infinitely small wisdom, see, infinite doesn't mean large necessarily. Infinitely minute wisdom has decided to to uh, sanction Russian the Russian economy, steal half of the Russian foreign reserves. Wow, you know, in most places that would have been. Uh, that itself is an act of war. 
piracy. They hang pirates, you know. So apparently it's only Somali pirates that get uh, uh, fired upon, not American pirates. They uh, just put the skull and crossbones over the White House or the Congress. Oddly appropriate, isn't it? Especially considering it's just past April 15th. Was April 15th the actual tax date this year? I don't know. As long as it wasn't before April 13th. All right, so... Anyway, so you put, and I was thinking about this the other day. So you, you sanction oil. You say, we're not going to buy oil, and we're not going to let anybody that we can control buy oil either from the Russians. Well, what about from other places? <laughs> yeah, uh, You know, they, first of all, a lot of this stuff is handled by international corporations that might be headquartered in some place like the Cayman Islands. Hmm. How do you prevent... See, these politicians are so ignorant of the way things work. So they, they shut down Russian access pretty much to SWIFT, which is simply a replacement for the old teletype machines. See, in the old days, one bank would send a telex to another bank saying, we intend to transfer this amount of money from this account to that account. Just like an email. A primitive email. That's okay. I used to have one of those machines. Um, yeah, back in those days. Anyway, that's uh, so. All it is is a notice that from one one uh, person or bank or customer or business to another that. Uh, we intend to to uh, purchase or sell or transfer money one way or the other. Okay? So it's like an order. Okay? A, a, an order one way or the other. Or an invoice, so to speak. And that's all it is. It's all it is. You could do it with email. You don't have to have an X. Uh, that's what they used to use, essentially, a telex machine. So apparently the government's decided we want to keep track of all these transactions. So we're going to put a centralized system in so we can control transactions. Well, what if you make the transaction outside of SWIFT, since you've cut the Russians off from SWIFT anyway? How do you know? So the reason this came up in my thinking was I was thinking, the Russians came up with this scheme where you could pay them for gas, for natural gas, in euros, and the Russians would convert the euros into rubles and then in another account in your name and then use those rural rubles to actually pay for the gas. But the question was, since it was Gazprom Bank that was going to do the actual conversion, the question that came to my mind is, what are they going to do with all these rubles or all these euros that they accumulate? Because they have to change the euros into rubles. So what do they do with the with the euros? Because they can't just take them and use them in Western banks and convert them. They have to convert them internally. So what do you do with euros? You buy things with them. So you can't buy them from the sanctioning countries because they won't take them from you. Well, what about the rest of the world? Most of the world. Plus international corporations. Whoever, who wants euros? We've got some euros. Well, we'll use euros to buy what we need from India and China and Japan and all these other countries that either uh, don't care for the American thumb on them or simply choose to not pay attention to the American thumb. Yeah. <sighs> Well, actually, Russia had that problem with, uh, with Napoleon at one time. See, Napoleon had this system of sanctions. If you were part of his empire, you had to not trade with England. But a lot of countries needed to trade with England, so they started doing it anyway, like Russia. And Napoleon said, bad, I'm going to attack you. 
invade you. I will destroy Russia. We all know how well that went. Yeah, you'd think Hitler would have looked at history, but apparently he never read history. Do not launch an invasion of Russia. Bad things can happen, especially in the winter. Uh, yeah, the, the story of what happened to Napoleon and his army, the, the Grand Army. Um, <laughs> how many came back? How many left and how many came back? Not many. Uh, anyway, so what's going to prevent... So, so Gazprom is going to simply use these euros to pay for things they need or exchange for things, they, uh, rubles or whatever, with whoever wills. The, the, the uh, coalition of the willing, if that rings any bells. And there's plenty of people out there willing. See, that's the thing about people that are interested in making money. They don't necessarily care who the money comes from. Have you ever noticed that? When you go to the store, they don't ask you about your points of view on things. They just want to know whether you got money to buy the product. Well, that's the way the world is. That's the way the world is. So since uh, these politicians don't seem to think they can control transactions, how? How? If you've got uh, euros, all you got to do is find somebody that's willing to take them. Oops! Little hole there in their sanctions. See, that's it. You have to control the entire world. The United States thinks it can control the entire world, but it can't. The vast majority of the world, as far as people, uh, have not sanctioned Russia and are not going to. In fact, they're looking on quite bemused and saying, hey, if the Russians can get by without the United States, so can we. Freedom. Now, what did uh, Martin Luther King say? Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. And President Putin is leading Russia to freedom. Freedom from the West. Freedom from being under the thumb of the United States. Maybe we Americans should keep a close eye on this. We might become free, too. We've had a shortage of freedom recently, and we have a person in office that, well, actually don't have a president in office. Not a real president. Just a figurehead that's being used for things by other people. Obviously, since he's not completely aware of what's real and what's not. And he's being escorted about by bunny rabbits, shaking hands with invisible specters. Sounds like a candidate for the nursing home. Worse than most. Uh, obviously, people like that, people that have spent their entire life in the Senate do not know how things actually work. So if you can simply do a transaction by I've got something, you've got something, let's make a deal. Well, like I said, international corporations often headquarter themselves in small countries that welcome them and don't interfere with what they do. What's the United States going to do? Start using submarines and torpedoing uh Oil tankers? I see somebody in, out of their right mind decided to grab a Russian ship the other day. If I was in the Kremlin, I would have uh, uh, some of our nuclear submarines out there, or his nuclear submarines, escorting those ships. Or maybe a surface vessel, to make it more obvious. You want to under... You want to... Uh, you pirates want to seize another one of our vessels? We'll treat you like pirates. Hang you from the harbor entrance, maybe. Treat you as if you're pirates, because that's what they are. They're pirates. They, so they, all these sanctions are illegal, unlawful. 
unilateral. Not approved by the United Nations. So, how, apparently these sanctioning uh, on transactions can't be a, actually are dollars or euros. How are you going to enforce it? If people uh, work outside your SWIFT control system, because that's all that is, is a way to control, central control of transactions. Huh. I, oil's not going to go to $185, I don't think, except maybe in some countries that actually do not allow oil across their border anymore. Because, okay, so Russia has other customers. They can sell it to China. They can sell it to just to most of the world. India, other countries. Most of the world. Except NATO countries and the United States. Except the United States is still buying it. Still buying Russian oil. See, it's all about politics. All, it's all about image. It's all about the narrative. It's all about the optics. It has nothing to do with reality. Except the world is real. The physical world is real. Well, these people don't know anything about the physical world. Huh. Strange people. Very strange people. That's why they have these gender confusion issues. They don't believe in reality. They don't know about reality. Huh. Strange. So, anyway, I don't think it'll go to $185 a barrel uh, because the, uh, the Russians aren't going to stop pumping oil. The global oil price is determined by supply and demand. And as long as the oil is actually being pumped, there's not going to be a shortage except locally where your crazy officials decide to create an artificial shortage, in which case you can all take to the streets with the torches and the pitchforks. Like in France, it's maybe time for us. As Jefferson said, it's, it's good for the tree of liberty to be watered occasionally with a little of that red liquid. Uh, maybe a second French Revolution. Or maybe, maybe there's been more than one. I don't know. I'm not up on French history. You know, of course, the rulers will simply tell you, well, you don't need that oil. You don't need a hot shower. You don't need uh, gas for your car. You can eat cake. That's what they're doing in Germany. They, they elected the Green Party. Well, when somebody turns green, it's time to... Remove them from office. That pallor is the pallor of death. Because that's the color people turn when they die. This sickly, greenish, yellowish color. It means there's no oxygen in their blood anymore. Okay, so $185 a barrel. Well, maybe the dollar will go down that low. <laughs> because they keep pumping it out. But no, globally, the oil supply will be there unless it's artificially reduced. And Russia, if, if oil is, what is it, $100, $120 a, gallon, a barrel right now, they're not going to stop. You see, what, they, what they've been doing, they've been enriching the Russian economy. And for, so now instead of getting $60 to $80 for, their, for a barrel of oil, they're now getting $100, $120 for a barrel of oil. Oh, sanctions. That, how, how do they work for you? Uh, whereas gasoline prices are now a dollar something above what they were a little while ago. Eh. Anyway, you can't, it just doesn't work that way in the real world. You can't, uh, you don't have, the government cannot control the dollars and the euros. Otherwise, the drug trade would be wiped out. Maybe that's why they want digital currencies. So everything is known by the government. Not a good plan. No, that's the opposite of freedom. And speaking of freedom, I was thinking a minute ago about Trump. How to win the election big time. Get a super majority, a super duper majority, a big enough majority to drain the swamp. What you do is you 
run on eviscerating, disemboweling the deep state, the NSA, the CIA, the Pentagon, the Congress, and these big, uh, and breaking up the big corporations. You'll get people from the left and the right and the center because we're all angry at all these things. You know, and you'd have to disembowel the deep state to return to a semi-constitutional form of government because the elected officials don't run it. As we saw the other day when a congressman came out, uh, he was on a campaign thing, and he was explaining how committee chairs, committee seats, are bought and sold in the Congress and the Senate. Literally bought and sold. How he'd have to raise a half a million dollars for a particular seat. And a corporation came along, a, some, a lobbyist came along and said, well, we'll supply that half a million dollars for you. Here, would you like to sign this, uh, support our legislation that we want on patent reform? Huh. Bought and sold, utterly corrupt. Apparently, this isn't even illegal. It's a scam. It's, this is not. These people in Congress, most of these people in Congress and the Senate and these uh, institutions do not serve the American people. They serve themselves in their own interests, their own jobs. They're not interested in the welfare of America or the rest of the world. They're interested in themselves, what they want. That's what's going on in the White House right now, because Biden's not enough there to resist anything. You really want to have a person that is not cognitively present to be in control of the levers of power of the nuclear button? Not a good plan. Because if nothing else, the advisors will come along and advise him. And it's, oh, yeah, that sounds good to me. What else do you want me to sign? You know, that, that was one of the things that I think got Trump in a lot of problems. He didn't trust the deep state. He didn't trust the national security establishment for good reason. And a businessman, you have to be able to read some of these things or you're going to get swindled. Well, he understood what was going on, the scam that it is. And he had campaigned against it, against these institutions. But he didn't realize how deep it ran and how much power they have because they're into everything else. There needs to be some really serious investigations into especially the black agencies like the NSA and the CIA, and you can throw the FBI and the Treasury Department in there too, perhaps. Exactly, you know, like the NSA and the CIA with their black budgets, they could have created their own businesses and everything else out there, and no one would know. And the way security works with it being sequestered, in other words, you only get to know what you need to know, regardless of how high your security clearance is. So there could be all kinds of little groups all over the place engaged in building their own empires and their own systems and have their own operatives and their own people on their payrolls without even you knowing about it because the payroll is secret. Everything is secret. The American people don't know. This all needs to be exposed to the light. Light has a tendency to stable to sterilize things and kill those nasty viruses and bacteria that are all over the place. It makes things healthy. You cannot have a democracy in the darkness because darkness only grows rot, fungus, parasites, you know, bats. You cannot grow healthy living things in the dark. That's not the way God made this world. 
got to be powered by the sun. You know, solar powered. The world's solar powered. It's always been solar powered, you silly people. <sighs> anyway, I think a, a, a surefire way for Trump to win, or anyone to win, would be to run on that. Truly draining the swamp. Permanently draining the swamp. Recycling it. Just gutting those dangerous agencies that are in place. As Eisenhower warned uh, back in right before he left the office about the military industrial congressional complex. Well, we've got all kinds of complexes that have sprung up like mushrooms since then, including in healthcare and you know, the CDC and the World Health Organization, and you got the United Nations. All these things are just corrupt to the core. Uh, and uh, NATO, NATO must be disbanded. It's a threat to world peace. I'm not sure the UN has much value either, other than a place for people to, well, get things off their chest. It's certainly, because it's, it doesn't function, the world doesn't function this way. The way to get along with your neighbors is not to form a big community uh, meeting and pass a bunch of rules. The way to get around, along with your neighbors is to go talk to your neighbors. Find out what the problems are. And then find out what works for both of you. Both sides have to win. That's how you make peace. Trump knows that. That's how he made peace in the Middle East. He simply went to both his uh, son-in-law, just goes to both sides and says, Hey, you know, there's a way you can both win and win. That's how you do it. That's how businesses make contracts. They both bring something the other party wants. But it's something you do one-to-one. -one. That's how you negotiate. That's how you make deals. That's how you keep peace. Looking out not only for your own interests, I'm going to be biblical at this point, seek not only your own interests, but also the good of others. What is, what, what is good for the other person too? If you're only in and for it yourself, that always breeds conflict. If you're interested in what is good for everybody, what is good for the other party, able to put yourself in their shoes and say, hey, I can give you this and you give me that. Yeah, that sounds like a good deal. That's called enterprise. <laughs> Free enterprise as opposed to capitalism, which is about how much can I get? That's why government, in order to fulfill its biblical uh, mandate to punish evil and reward good, needs to limit the size and power of corporations. God did in the Old Testament. They didn't have corporations, but there were uh, restrictions imposed to keep people from being put into permanent bondage and debt, you know, like a seven-year automatic bankruptcy, and some other things to, to limit the ability for a few individuals to get control of everything, to get control of the land permanently. It was prevented by God, assuming they followed his commandments. So government has a role in that. It's not zero government. Libertarianism is wrong. The Bible gives us the instruction that government is, exists to punish evildoers and to reward good. That's its mandate. It's not in the, it is not there to fix society. It is not there to provide security for everything and every aspect, provide health care and, and retirement and all these other things that it's into now. That's not its mandate from heaven. So God will not bless it when it operates outside of God's established domain for it. But when there's corporations that are doing evil, when there's uh, uh, like uh, social media that is using it to control people's thinking and influence people and everything else wrongly, then they have a role. 
when corporations start oppressing others and putting other corporations out of business as they try to gobble everything up, that's time to punish them, to break them up, to make sure they can't do that. When individuals steal their neighbor's possessions, well, then it's time to punish them for that. Justly. And God gives us examples of what's just and unjust. But when government decides that it's God, then it comes under the wrath of God. When people decide to worship government, then they become under the wrath of God. When people no longer submit to what God says is right and wrong, when they suppress the knowledge of God and what he's commanded us, then they put themselves under the anger of God. But right now, we've got a government that's completely out of control. A government who is directly responsible for what's going on in Ukraine right now. NATO, it's not about defense. It's, it is now an aggressive power under the control of the United States, where it's always been under the control of the United States. The United States has become a force for wickedness in this world. It's not interested even in the welfare of the American people. That's not what they're doing now. They're serving other interests, especially their own interests. And that has to end, or America will end very shortly and very suddenly. Well, that's my rant for the 20th of April, 2022.